Hey guys, it's Ryan. Let's pick up where we left off and uh, talk about equilibrium of tooth mineral between the tooth and the mouth. So, last video we talked about hydroxyapatite, we talked about carbonate substituted hydroxyapatite, and now let's apply it to this equilibrium. So, I've drawn out this um, equilibrium between hydroxyapatite in the tooth and free calcium and phosphate in the mouth and in the plaque that covers that tooth. And this will be central to the rest of this video series. So if you want to draw this out, if you want to write this down somewhere, that's awesome because this is something we'll be referring back to uh, throughout the rest of this talk. So uh, with that, let's get started. So now sugar is always what we're told is bad for our teeth. Right? Sugar will rot your teeth away. So it's safe to say that sugar is bad for your teeth, right? Well, yes and no. Sugar by itself is actually a preservative. It soaks up the water that many bacteria love because bacteria, most bacteria love to live in moist environments. And so sugar prevents the growth of microbes that can spoil food like jellies. Um, but our mouths are different. They're constantly wet and offer the perfect environment for bacteria with lots of nooks and crannies to, to live in. So bacteria digest the sugar that we consume for energy via glycolysis and then go one step further to produce lactic acid via fermentation. And this organic acid is secreted directly onto the tooth enamel and is the actual culprit here. So these hydrogen ions, or this acid, complexes with a free phosphate in the mouth to form phosphoric acid, which drives the reaction to the right. And this is due to Le Chatelier's principle, which, which states that as we lose mineral, or we lose molecules on one side of the equation, the equilibrium seeks to restore that imbalance. So if hydrogen pulls this reaction to the right, it will also pull this reaction to the right, and in doing so, pull calcium and phosphate out of the tooth, weakening that tooth. And this is how sugar and bacteria cause decay in teeth. So that's pretty cool. At least I think so. And now there's also other more direct sources of acid. So gastric esophageal reflux disease or frequent vomiting can cause gastric acid to come in contact with teeth, which, if chronic, can cause erosive damage by this same um, equilibrium. Also, lots of drinks like soda have citric, carbonic, and phosphoric acids that also increase the um, H plus concentration and thus lower the pH of the mouth. So since soda also has sugar, it's no wonder that you don't see dentists often recommending frequent soda drinking to their patients. So this process of leaching uh, minerals from the teeth is appropriately called demineralization. It's also sometimes referred to as decalcification or decal for short, but demineralization is more technically correct because the tooth is also losing um, it's losing calcium mineral, but it's also losing phosphate mineral. So here I have a brown spot because it's it looks nice in the diagram, but a white spot is actually the first clinical sign of early mineral loss because the leaching of minerals causes the tooth enamel to lose its translucent properties and it shows up as a white spot that has lost its shine or lost its luster. Um, oh, I did want to mention one other thing. Um, have you ever heard that you're not supposed to brush like immediately after drinking an acidic drink like soda? Well, it's not recommended since the enamel is temporarily softened by the acid and is vulnerable to abrasion by the toothbrush. So instead, rinse well with water, uh, flush out some of this acid, and then wait 30 minutes to brush carefully with a soft brush. So here's the Stefan curve, and this will be um, central to the rest of our talk here. And it essentially shows the pH of plaque that covers the tooth, which is 
again, central to this equilibrium here, and it shows um, how that plaque pH will change over time. So in this case, um, we have it graphed in minutes. Normally, the mouth sits at around pH 7, which is pretty neutral. But when exposed to acidic drinks, um, GERD, or in this case, bacteria secreting acid onto our tooth, the pH of plaque covering the tooth decreases rapidly, hitting a minimum within about 5 to 20 minutes. Now you might be wondering, what the heck is this critical pH? Well, critical pH is the pH at which tooth mineral starts dissolving. So anything below the critical pH is when calcium and phosphate ions start dissolving out of the tooth, uh, dissolving from the tooth surface, making that tooth weaker. And so the area under the curve in red is demineralization. And er any area under the curve above the line colored in green is remineralization, which we can talk about more a little bit later. So carbonate substituted hydroxyapatite, or CHA, has a critical pH around 5.5. Of course, there are variations among individuals depending on our exact concentration of calcium, phosphate, and carbonate. Dentin and cementum, however, fall around somewhere around 6.7. Uh, could be a range, maybe 6.2 to 7 or something like that. Around 6.7 is average. And this is why if you have an exposed root surface where you have cementum or maybe dentin exposed to the mouth, this is why exposed root surfaces are more, accept more susceptible to acid erosion and decay because the critical pH is so much higher. You can imagine how much more area under the curve would be colored in red, and you'd be having a lot more demineralization occurring a lot more frequently. So I'm going to stop the video here. We're going to pick up right where we left off in the next video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.